Once again, we're back to the periodic table, and we want to choose one of these elements to make a video about. Let's go to number 16, right under oxygen. An element called sulfur, which is also known as a very stinky element. Sulfur is a very old element and it has been recognized for a very long time. It has even been mentioned in the Jewish book Torah, but there is nothing positive written in there about this interesting element. In the Torah and later on in the Bible it is written, if you want to know what the smell of hell is like, it smells like sulfur. Nowadays there are plenty of different ways you can get sulfur. But back in the day, most of the sulfur available was around volcanoes, especially close to the mouth of the volcano itself. And sometimes you could even see lava next to it, but not all the time. Whenever you're around volcano, you can smell the sulfur as well, which smells terrible. And a lot of people say it's one of the worst smells they ever felt. The stories written in the Torah and the Bible is reasonable as well, because volcano is like a hell itself and there's always sulfur next to it. So it makes sense that hell smells like sulfur. In ancient Greece, they used sulfur as a pesticide, but it wasn't really good. And 2,600 years ago, ancient Chinese were the first people to purify sulfur and use it in different forms of medicine. We are not sure if the medicine worked either, because if it did, they would probably make more of it to this day, but they don't. We finally get to the era of alchemists, when Middle Eastern and Indian scientists are trying to mix chemicals together so they can reach gold. Like for example, the Persian scientist Al-Razi would always experiment with sulfur to see what he can receive. And alchemists refer to sulfur by using this symbol, which doesn't really mean anything, it just means sulfur. But nowadays they just put the S or just write out sulfur. When we get to the 16th century, the Europeans fall in love with sulfur and add it to everything. The French add sulfur to make up for women, especially their skincare products. At that time, the only mine that was available that had sulfur was in Sicily, and most of the sulfur would be sent to France because they were their largest purchaser. Later on, the British start experimenting with sulfur and add it to soap. And back in the day, they realized that sulfur soap could help with acne, and this is the advertisement to prove it. Some may think sulfur is cancerous and it's bad for you, but it's not like that. Sulfur is not cancerous and it's not even toxic. So these products are not bad for you. But on the other side, like back in the day, they used to put arsenic in women's makeup, and that's extremely toxic and cancerous, which we've made a video on. Even though humans have taken sulfur around volcanoes for thousands of years, but scientists don't really know why sulfur is produced around volcanoes. It's interesting to know that you also have sulfur crystals, which pretty much look like any crystal, but they're yellow, and it's extremely rare. Anywhere there's sulfur that has seen a lot of pressure, there is sulfur crystals around there, exactly like diamonds, but diamonds are made with carbon and they take much more pressure and time. Some may ask, where does the pressure come from? It's basically the weight of rocks, dirt, and the gravity that pushes down and creates that much pressure. And that is why it's much rarer than you think, just like every other gemstone on earth. Sulfur crystal looks beautiful just like every other gemstone, but unfortunately, you can't use it as jewelry because as soon as you cut into it, it basically breaks apart and turns into powder. And that is why it doesn't hold the same value as other gemstones. If they could actually cut it, this stone would be much more valuable. But let's get back to the element itself. If you put sulfur somewhere cold like liquid nitrogen, it will turn white. But if you heat it up and burn it, it will turn brown. When it turns brown, you have a form of liquid plastic, but it's not the plastic you're used to, a very flexible form of plastic. In different factories, sulfur is an extremely important element 
because it's added to things like plastic bags so it could get stretchy without ripping apart. And another interesting thing about sulfur is one of the most important elements in a car's tire. The reason sulfur is so important in tires, it allows it to not dry out and it also makes it last much longer than without sulfur. But alright, let's talk about the smell of this element, one of the most important features. And back in the day, they referred to it as the smell of hell. You probably knew this, but rotten eggs is the worst smell in the world. The reason rotten eggs creates this smell is because the protein is breaking down inside the egg and it produces hydrogen sulfide. This is the formula for it, two hydrogen atoms and a sulfur atom. The hydrogen doesn't really create smell and the terrible smell comes from the sulfur. Have you ever smelt natural gas? It smells kind of weird. But you have to know that this is not the smell of natural gas itself because it's odorless. It is the smell that is added to it when the natural gas is in the refinery. And the reason for that is when natural gas doesn't have smell, it's extremely dangerous when you have it running for a while and people don't realize that the room is filled with gas. So they add the smell so people realize what is happening. They add this chemical to natural gas, which is called methanethiol. And this is the formula, which is made from carbon, hydrogen, and sulfur. But of course, the strong smell is created by the sulfur. So do sulfur only come from volcanoes? Back in the day, that's how it was. But nowadays, most of the sulfur comes from oil and natural gas. When you take oil and natural gas from the ground and it goes to the refinery, a certain part of that refinery separating the sulfur only so they can sell it. Oil is kind of like sheep. Every part of this animal can be sold, even its feces. Oil is the same exact thing. There's nothing that can be wasted. Either way, you can get sulfur from many different ways. As you know, Indonesia is a humongous country and there are a lot of volcanoes here. And that is why there is a lot of sulfur mines. In some parts of Indonesia, when the sun finally sets, some people's day just begin. These workers go down into the mouth of the volcano and they go so low that they get to the bottom where there is a lot of sulfur and it's so hot down there, they can't go any lower. Then they break off pieces of sulfur, put it in their baskets, put it on their shoulder, and slowly make their way up the mountain. Their goal is to get back up before the sun rises. If the sun rises, it gets extremely hot and it's unbearable to be down there. These employees take more than 10 hours to do this once and they bring this much sulfur up. And for something like this, the employee can get about $12. You might say only $12. Yes, because compared to other jobs in Indonesia, this pays much better and that is why these people decide to do this. This sulfur you're seeing is more pure form, that is why it's more value. But if you want to get not pure for sulfur, it's gonna be cheaper, about $150 per ton. 